Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about House of Reckoning by John Saul. Um, I kind of like this book. Uh, it was weird. It was different. Let me read the back. After the untimely death of her mother and the arrest of her father for killing a man in a barroom brawl, 14-year-old Sarah Crane is forced to grow up fast. Left in the cold care of a foster family and alienated at school, Sarah befriends classmate Nick Dunnigan, a former mental patient still plagued by voices and visions, and the eccentric art instructor Bettina Phillips, a mentor eager to nurture Sarah's talent for painting. But within the walls of Bettina's ancestral mansion, Sarah finds that monstrous images from the house's dark history seem to flow unbidden from her paintbrush. Images echoed by Nick's chilling hallucinations. It seems the violence and fury of long-dead generations have finally found a gateway from the grave into the world of the living. And Sarah and Nick have found a power they never had to take control and take revenge. Um, I got this book really thinking this was going to be another John Saul uh, evil house novel, if that makes sense. And that's not what this is at all. The house is, in a way, its own protagonist. Uh, Bettina moves back in. There is, yeah, a long history in the house of violent, dark history, um, some of which is the art instructor's own, as well as Sarah's and Nick's, even though they don't know it or were too young to remember. Um, yeah, the Foster family is definitely something straight out of a nightmare. Uh, they, they make Harry Potters look nice. Um, basically super religious, um and hypocritically so where their kids can kind of do whatever but they more or less are trying to force certain things on uh sarah even though she is a good student um and basically you kind of see a lot of the town is against sarah and nick very much small town that plays favorites um in which if you are on the football team or a cheerleader or something like that or come from the right family, then you are on the outs. And even though Nick comes from the right family, he is known as being an odd person. Um, and especially, you know, once he is committed to the psychiatric hospital. But this is kind of where the book takes a turn because Sarah and Nick are immediately attracted to each other and feel an instant connection even if they don't quite understand what it is um and then the drawings that sarah makes and coupled with some of the dreams that nix has about the accidents that happen to the people that go against them um start coming true and the town starts to kind of blame them as if maybe nick and them perpetrated it but in fact, it is, you kind of learn that it's kind of the house that much really, it's explained but not explained how this power comes to them, uh, which I kind of thought was annoying. And there is some stuff that later comes out how Sarah and them are connected to Patina as well and their full connection to the house. Um, it. I don't still, even after reading the book, I really don't understand it fully, but what I do understand is that wrongs were done to the inhabitants of the house over the years by various town folks, and the house kind of protects its own. So when similar wrongs start happening to Bettina and Sarah and Nick, and the house starts to wake up, that power comes to them, and whether they guide it or know it or not, the house kind of starts to take revenge for them, right? It is the house of reckoning. It is going to protect its inheritors at all costs. Um, and the more they let it in, the more it wakes up and the more powerful it gets, which I thought was kind of interesting and definitely like a cosmic horror kind of way. And I was hoping they were going to lean into that and kind of describe more where the house got its power. Uh, they kind of throw out a couple different versions um like you know there's like rumors around town and then they kind of show flashes from the history of the house and sarah has dreams and you know stuff she draws but it's never fully fully gone into other than the fact that the ancestors kind of want to protect the new population of 
their people. Um, I I liked this book. Uh, it's not my favorite book by John Saul by any means, um, but I liked it for what it was. I definitely think if you're looking for something to read, it's not a bad choice, especially if you like revenge stories. My all-time favorite book is The Count of Monte Cristo. I love a revenge story, so even while there was several plot points that I couldn't get into or didn't understand or like stuff that kind of felt just thrown in there later, like some of the stuff that happened with Patina and stuff like that, or I don't know. It, it was just a lot of like stuff that just kind of gets thrown in there later near the very end of the book. You're just like, well, what the hell just happened? Um, I didn't mind it because all the bad people got their comeuppance, right? And that's all I really want in a revenge story. Like if you... I don't care how crazy it gets. I don't care how off the rails it gets. I don't care if I have a million questions at the end. If you're telling me a revenge story and all the bad people get their comeuppance, then I'm happy. And that's what happens here. Every bad person, just like the Count of Monte Cristo, gets their comeuppance, and therefore I'm happy. So if you're looking for a slightly therapeutic revenge read, then yeah, why not? I don't think it's a very scary book. There are some gruesome deaths, but very early on, you kind of have the understanding that the main characters, Sarah and Nick, are going to be safe from the supernatural forces. Um, because while they are odd and maybe scary at times, it they never get the vibe, at least it's never described that they get the vibe that they're in danger. So um, I do think that like suspense element was kind of taken out of it for me. Uh, but obviously when you're reading from other characters' points of view, you do understand that they are in danger, right? Because that's how horror novels work. When you haven't been in one person's head throughout the entire book, and then suddenly you are, you know they're about to have a bad time. Which is fine, and I thought uh, was done pretty well here. Um, I also thought it was interesting... I mean, it was over the top at times how the misplaced anger from various townsfolk and even teenagers were directed at Sarah and Nick just for being different. Or, you know, Sarah for being a basically a foster kid, which I thought was kind of, you know, wild. I mean, I remember a lot of bullying when I was in high school directed at various people, but I don't really remember anyone being bullied for being a foster kid, at least from my experience, I'm sure it did happen to someone somewhere. But definitely, like, I, I wouldn't think it would happen to the extent where, like, the administration's bullying them. And then, like, also all the adults in the town are. Like, that seemed kind of wild to me that... You know what I mean? Like, usually you would think of small towns as coming together for someone who is put in less fortunate circumstances. And this book is, like, the complete opposite. The entire town is, like oh, we did not want some random child to move in here because obviously they're trouble. And so, like, all the adults are, like, against Sarah, who is described as, like, a straight-A student who says, yes, sir, and no, ma'am. Like, so, like, like, which you would think, like, an adult would pick up on, but no, like, it's just all her interactions from the other adult's point of view is, like, like this conniving, like, foster kid, which... Seemed wild, but uh, definitely made it that much sweeter when bad things later happened to them um, for the way they treated Sarah and Nick. So yeah, like I said, if you're in the market for that kind of story, definitely pick this up. If not, I completely understand this isn't a haunted house book, so if you go into this thinking you're going to get like a John Saul, like, like John Saul's version of a uh, Rose Red or something like that, that is not what this is. Um, because while the house is important and the ghosts or spirits are interesting, they are really just there to protect like Nick and Sarah and the people that are waking the house up. So uh, just bear that in mind. Like it's not a haunted house book. It's not my favorite book by John Saul, but it is still good. And of course, if you have read this, please let me know about it in the comments, how you feel felt about it, if you agree, if you disagree. And as always, please like and subscribe.